Do you want to get your iOS apps on the big screen? Well, we have made it easier than ever before. Hi, I'm Gustavo Moreira from the Google Developer Relations team, and I'm going to talk to you about the Google Cast SDK version 3 for iOS. In June 2016, we launched the new version 3 API for the Google Cast SDK. The new Cast SDK simplifies several parts of the previous Google Cast SDK and addresses the major pain points identified by content partners and developers. The new CAS SDK greatly reduces the amount of code needed by providing UI widgets that fully comply with the CAST UX design checklist. First, here's some terminology about how casting works. The Google CAST Sender application refers to an app running on a mobile device or laptop, and the Receiver application refers to an HTML application running on a Chromecast or any other Google CAST receiver devices. Let's take a quick look at the typical lifecycle of a CAST Sender app. When the CAST Sender app is launched, CAST receiver devices need to be discovered on the local network. Once the user selects a device, the Sender app will connect to that device and launch the Receiver app. The Sender app then creates a message channel to the Receiver app to send and receive messages. The user can also disconnect from that device at any time. The new SDK implements these new features. UI widgets that comply with the Google Cast design checklist, notification and lock screen controls, automatic device discovery so you don't have to manage that in your code, centralized cast session state management, and a reconnection service that automatically handles network issues to keep your sender app connected to the receiver. Even when a user leaves the room and goes out of the range of the network, the session will be automatically reconnected when the user returns. To get your hands on the new SDK, you just need to install the Google Cast SDK version 3 or higher from CocoaPods. Make sure to use iOS 8.0 as the deployment platform. Let's take a look at how to add Cast to your app. The Cast framework has a global singleton object, the GCK Cast context, which coordinates all the Cast interactions. You must create a Cast options object to initialize the Cast context singleton. The most important option is the receiver application ID, which you get from the Google Cast Developer Console. You can then get the Cast Context instance by using the static shared instance method. You can also set a default logger to the logger shared instance. For your app's UI, the first step in supporting Cast is to add the Cast button. The SDK provides a Cast button widget that automatically manages its visibility and state and provides all the necessary dialogues for users to select and disconnect devices. The Cast Button UI is a UI button that can be added to the navigation bar as a right bar button item. Just initialize the Cast Button with the proper size and add it to the navigation bar. When a user selects a Cast device using the Cast Button menu, a new Cast session is started automatically by the framework. All the user interactions, including backing out of this menu, are handled by the widget. The list of devices is filtered based on the app ID configuration in the Google Cast Developer Console. For the Cast framework, a Cast session encapsulates the connection to a device, managing the receiver application, and initializing a media control channel for the media apps. Cast sessions are managed by the session manager which can be accessed via the Session Manager property on the Cast Context object. The GCK Session Manager listener callbacks can be used to monitor session events such as creation, suspension, resumption, and termination. To play media on the receiver, the Sender app has to create the media metadata of the media stream. Here, you can see how to set the media type, title, and images using the media metadata class. And here, you can see how to set the media URL, string type, and other metadata using the Media Information class. The Remote Media Client class is then used to load that media string on the receiver. The Sender app then invokes commands such as play and pause using the Remote Media Client. The Sender app can use the Session Manager listener callbacks to track the session state and decide when to enable and disable the local media player. As required by the Cast UX guidelines, the SDK provides a widget called the mini controller that appears when the user navigates away from the current content page to another part of the app. 
the mini controller provides instant access to playback controls and a visible reminder for the current CAS session. The CAS SDK provides a custom view, UI mini controls view controller, which can be created from the CAS context object and added to any container view in your app. The Google CAS design checklist also requires a sender app to provide an expanded controller for the media being cast. The expanded controller is a full screen version of the mini controller. The CAS SDK provides a widget for the expanded controller that can be presented directly from the CAS context object. To add an expanded controller, just enable it in the app delegate of your app. In the did finish launching with options method, just enable the default expanded media controls of the SDK in the cast context object. The cast SDK provides a custom view called call cast instructions view controller that can be used to highlight the cast button when it's first shown to users. This code shows how you can use the cast context present cast instructions view controller once method to show the overlay in your app only the first time the user access it. That's everything you need to cast enable your app. You can get more details about the Google Cast SDK at developers.google.com slash cast. We have also open source sample cast apps that you can use as a reference. And if you have any developer questions, post those on the Stack Overflow. Join our Google Cast developers community on G Plus to keep up to date with SDK updates and to chat with other developers and share ideas. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Thank you.